words! Good job. Yeah. You're pressing your vibe. Yo, what up guys, it's Gary Vee and it's time for the daily bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward, right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the daily bread. I want to introduce Tyler Harris. He's uh, been fortunate. I, I just appreciate you coming out here and spending the time with us today and really just coming out and talk. He's going to be touching. He's not a part of our industry, but that doesn't matter. Like I said, I'm bringing value to the table here, and everybody that I'm bringing into the situation has something to bring to you, and there's true, true value. It's not about a sales pitch or anything else. I want you to pay attention to this message. It's about life. It's about a professional. It's about yourself. It's about <laughs> progressing you as a professional and making sure that you can get out there creating an image, essentially, and figuring out how to be the best person that you can possibly be, really. So, here, here. I don't know if you guys realize this, but there's only one you. But the reality is, a lot of us, me included, a lot of us, there's the you in front of your spouse, there's the you in front of your friends, there's the you at work, there's the you at the bar, there's the you at church, there's the you with your mentor, there's the you with your mentee. Like there's a million different yous, but the reality is there's really only one you. And that whole process, we call it self-awareness, and just figuring out who that person is. Because until you figure out who you really are, not who you say you are, not who you pretend to be, not who you'd like to be, but who you actually are, until you figure that out, there's really no point in investing in any type of self-development or any type of training or any type of, of growth because you're building it all on a faulty foundation. And once you hit the first bump in the road, it's all gonna fall to the wayside. And so for me, it was really digging in deep and figuring out who I was and ultimately who I wanted to become. And a lot of that was digging deep. It was digging deep and kind of channeling this inner kind of emotional core um, this inner kind of alpha male thing that I had just been pushing down and pushing to the side for a long, long, long time. And, and I'll give you a practical, let me do a little exercise here. That way we can wake you guys up because I know it's been a long day. Uh, but this was an actual practice that, we, that I did, that we still do uh, on a regular basis with all of our salespeople. And it's called robbing the bank. Robbed a lot of banks in my day, not really, but in my head. Um, but this is what that practice looks like. It, it literally is channeling this idea of walking into a bank and, and robbing it. Like, what would you say? How would you say it to convince these customers and employees that like you're, you're robbing a bank? Like, like they, everyone needs to get down and give you the money and, and you're robbing a bank. So what I would absolutely love to do is I would love to have someone volunteer, please, and rob the bank for us. How, whatever that means for you, I just want to see how you would rob a bank. Like, just channel that, like, raw nature and raw bank. So who wants to do it? Who wants to rob the bank? Oh, man, our perfect guy's gone. Do it, baby. Ready? Yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. Yeah. It's all about getting uncomfortable. It's all about getting uncomfortable. So imagine you just, you're walking into a bank and, and let, it, let it rip. <laughs> I've always wanted to rob a bank. <laughs> I mean, like, literally, this the is something I is, think like, about all the time. When I was going time. through this process, I was literally in my head kind of like, well, if this stuff doesn't work out, like, I may have to rob a bank. So, like, it's kind of like dual practice. I like, think about it one. often. So, I, I, you know, you're riding by and you get all these people to get away with it. I'd probably be more the guy who walks up to the teller with the little note and says, <laughs> <laughs> you know, come look at me. She gives me that dead cold space and it's just like, it's happening right now. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, I'm in charge. This is my, you know, and then it's basically give me, give me the fucking money. Essentially. <laughs> it's basically fucking is, that, money. is that how you would say it? Yeah. I mean, why not at that point in time? I mean, you're, about to, you're robbing a bank, so I would definitely not hold back at that point. I wouldn't be, hi, please, can you uh, hand me all your money? No ink packages, please. Uh, no, no. No, it's give me that money right now. It's going and get it. I didn't get the point of the exercise. It's 100%. I mean, you're walking into a customer's house. 
And this is perfect for us because we walk into customers' houses and they have four other people coming in an insurance adjuster who wants to give you the next guy who's on their vendor list. Give me the job. Give me this job. Why? Give me this job right now because of the fact that I'm taking from you. You have no other option, period. You're not walking out with giving me the money for the job, in essence. So, yeah, I get it. I like it. what I was looking for. <laughs> I definitely should have done that at the end. <laughs> so, so that was wildly uncomfortable for you. 100%. When you did it, wildly uncomfortable for me. And that's the whole point of it. Like, How often do you channel like that part of you? Like that, that inner just savage on a regular basis? Like never, never happens. So with, with our salespeople, we do these boot camp trainings and we make every single one of them do it. And it usually starts like that. It's like, I'd probably just do this, you know, and I'd say this. And I mean, we had this guy one time and he was just like, all right, freeze. And I was like, I was like, ah, it just creeped me out so much. I may, I may believe that more than anybody. Um, but then people would start, start kind of opening up. Like one guy jumped on a table one time and it just buckled in half. And we make everybody do this because we do a lot of role play stuff and we were about to get into it and we just needed to, everybody to just get over it. And so that in a small scale, that exercise is in a larger scale how I try to live my entire life. And that's seeking discomfort. If you seek pleasure, the world will only deliver you discomfort. If you seek discomfort, the world will only deliver you with pleasure. And it's something that I've tried and tried and tried and tried and it's always, always worked out that way. So seeking uncomfortable situations, seeking to put myself in as many uncomfortable situations as I possibly can uh, throughout the day, like the more awkward, the better. Uh, but that process is what really helped me kind of gain my confidence back. Um, gain kind of like your mojo back and, and tap into just that raw, raw nature uh, of who you are. So, so what happened over that <clears throat> next three and a half years? So I met um, some mentors. God, my voice is literally gone. Um, I met some mentors. They came into my life around that time where I'd started this transformation. And guys, this is three and a half years ago. So I love being able to talk about it because it was like yesterday. But they came into my life they saw more in me at that time than I saw myself and started kind of building me up, uh, pouring into me affirmations. Uh, we, started a, we started a business uh, together and I just put my head down and went to work. Uh, I didn't really talk about it with a lot of people and tell them what I was doing. I just went all in uh, for the first time since right out of college. And what happened was the next 12 months made over $300,000 in income. Next 12 months made over $450,000 in income. Next 12 months made almost $700,000 in income, which was last year. And then a couple months later, um, this year became uh, part owner uh, of our company that did 12 and a half million uh, in revenue uh, last year. All in a three and a half year period of just waging war, seeking discomfort, and trying to be the absolute best person I could be uh, every single day. And so that is, for me, it's a rapid transformation rapid transformation. But during that process, I understood that that wasn't normal. And so about 14, 15 months ago, uh, I started to build my personal brand. Um, what I'd love is for someone to give me a definition of a personal brand. You hear these people talk about it all the time, like building your personal brand and 10 top ways to Build your personal brand. So, what, yeah, what does personal brand mean? Distinction uh, of your characteristic okay. or your appearance or however you want to position yourself separately of others. So if you're building that, what would that, what would that, what would that mean? So if you're building that personal brand. Okay. Anybody else? Personal brand? I've been trying to figure this out for a little while. Ron so. and Bank's pretty personal brand. <laughs> 
Yes, definitely. But so it's almost funny to me, like you hear, you hear people talk about this personal branding and oh, I'm currently building my personal brand. They make it sound like it's freaking Elon Musk building rocket ships, like, like it's some huge fancy thing. Your personal brand is just your reputation. That's it. That's all it is. And in the context of the way I look at it, it's building your reputation online via social media. And so that's what I really want to talk about real quickly here um, to get a little bit tactical on what that looks like. Because whether you like it or not, it's a necessity. It may not be a necessity today, but to stay in business long term, it's, you just have to do it. And so for me, what that looked like was just starting to document my life. What I knew was over that first two years, going from being unemployed, in debt, broke, depressed, you name it, I was probably going through it, if not worse, to where I was, not having documented that was the biggest mistake I probably ever made in my entire life. But the next biggest would have been from there forward not to start. And so from there, I started documenting my life just every single day. And what I like about that phrase, documenting your life, is it's not a grown man following you around with a camera, which now it is, <laughs> which is still super freaking weird and very awkward all the time. Um, but it's just documenting throughout your day. Like, like Whitney said, just hit, putting a title and, and hitting live and going live on Facebook. Like, that's all it is. I used it in the beginning and, and still to this day as an accountability tool for me. I'm in sales, I sell life insurance, and that's one distinction I wanna, wanna make for you guys is I know a lot of you are thinking right now, well, what I do is not interesting. Well, what if, what if my career is not interesting? What if my job's not interesting? What if my business isn't interesting? What if my life just isn't interesting? I promise you it's way more interesting than selling life insurance, hands down. Like, no one, people that talk about being passionate about selling life insurance have just been saying that lie for so long that they've actually started believing it. There's nothing, there's nothing cool or fun about it at all. But it affords me the ability to do all this other stuff, which I am passionate about. It's a whole other story about you don't have to be passionate about what you're doing, but you can be passionate about doing it with excellence, affording you the ability to do. But I would use it as an accountability tool. So I would go on there. I travel three to four nights a week, usually in Georgia and in this area. I live in Greenville, South Carolina. And I would go on there Sunday night as I'm headed down the road or early Monday morning as I'm headed down the road. And I would say, hey, my, my goal is to sell 50 life insurance policies this week. I'm going to be down in Georgia for four days. We'll keep you guys posted. Monday, would recap at the end of the day, maybe jump on a couple times throughout the day. But sometimes just at the end of the day, I'd say, hey, got done with my meetings. I sold 12 life insurance policies today. So I'm a little behind in my goal. Next day I jump on, hey, I sold 36 life insurance policies today, I'm way ahead of schedule. Next day, horrible day today. I had the worst day of my entire career. And that's the key is being honest and being transparent and showing the good, bad, and the ugly. And I'd say, yeah, now I'm behind in my goal. I got my last day coming up, day four. And the craziest thing would start happening. These people that were following my page would start messaging me and commenting and they would say stuff like, hey man, you know, it's Thursday, I think this is your last day, what do you have, like 11 more policies you need to hit your goal, like we're rooting for you. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. But to me, that is my definition of the law of attraction. I'm sitting there all week and I'm saying 50 policies, 50 policies, 50 policies, 50 policies, and all these other people are hearing me say it and keeping me accountable and I'm telling what my results are each day. And lo and behold, at the end of the last day, I would count them up and I would say, hey, I'm at 50 or 51 or 52. It'd almost always be like right at it, which would always be frustrating because I'd be like, well, what if I said 70? Dang. <laughs> but each time it was like right at it. And sure, there were times that I've missed it. There's, there's always there, the first time that I started this daily vlog and the first time that TJ was with me, the very first week, I missed it by like four and it drove me absolutely crazy. But the coolest thing about it is I got on Facebook Live at the end of that week and I'm counting them up and I'm saying, hey, my goal was 50 and I got 46. I could have said I had 70. No one would have ever known the difference. But by saying I got 46 and that I was pissed off about it and that I missed my goal and that it was eating at me, like I got more response and more feedback from that because I actually told the truth. But that allowed me to remain focused on what was bringing in the income. 
And that's another big distinction or a big issue that a lot of people have with, oh, if I'm going to start doing this stuff online or if I'm going to start trying to build my personal brand, it's going to take away from the time that I should be making calls or the time that I should be following up with clients and customers and all this stuff. But you can use these things as an actual accountability tool to not only keep you focused, but to kind of expedite that process of, of goal setting and hitting your goals. And for me, that's exactly the reason I had the results that I had. What I know is the more things that you are grateful for and that you express gratitude for, the more things you will be given to be grateful for. That's just how it works. The universe will never be in debt to you. It'll never be in debt to you. And so by building a personal brand and putting this good stuff out there, it always comes back tenfold. I could tell a thousand stories just in the last year of how it's done so for me. And I just want every single person to be able to experience that. It's just about putting stuff out there, paying it forward, providing value, not expecting anything in return, but just knowing that it's the right thing to do and that the universe will always, 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 always return that 10, 100, 1,000 fold. So with that, I'm done. What's up guys, if you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page, then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down, and when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we wanna have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first, and we'll see you next time.